Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Microsoft Wireless Display Adapter. This is a device that lets you wirelessly cast your Android phone or your Windows device to a monitor and it actually works a lot better than some of the other ones I have looked at over the last couple of years. It works via Miracast, uh, which is a pretty standard protocol now on everything except the Apple platform. I should say in the interest of full disclosure that this product came in through the Amazon Vine program to the channel free of charge. I've been a member of Vine now for about 10 years or so. Uh, you can learn more about how the Vine program works down below in the video description, but basically it works through Amazon and I have no direct contact with Microsoft in this review, uh, nor actually do I have any contact with Amazon beyond them sending this to me. Uh, so nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions that you're about to hear are my own and nobody is reviewing this video before it is posted. You can see more about my policies down below in the video description. You can also learn a little bit more about Amazon Vine in that uh, link that I provide as well. So this is the device here, very simple actually. It's got two ends to it. You've got an HDMI plug. You plug that into your HDMI port on your TV and then you plug this into a USB port on your television and most uh, TVs should have a USB port. Uh, the USB provides power to the device so once you plug it in uh, it comes up and you should be good to go. They don't give you a uh, power adapter in the box but they do give you a short USB extension cable if you can't reach uh, the uh, USB port from where your HDMI port is located, but you could also use like a phone charger or something to plug it in. All right, so I'm gonna plug it in right now. I'm just gonna attach this end to the HDMI port on my TV here, and we'll put the other one into the USB port here. And once we do that, uh, it should power itself up. It takes about uh, 10 or 20 seconds for it to completely load up and get operating. Uh, and then we'll be able to connect our Android phone first and see how this thing works. All right, so once the display adapter is booted up, you will get to this splash screen here and it's waiting for a connection from a device. So we're gonna take our Android phone out first. And what I'm gonna do is just pull down my uh, menu here. And on Android M, you'll have a button here called cast on this uh, drawer that you pull down, uh, but you can also find it within your settings. So if you go over to display, uh, on my version of Android here, there's a cast option. Uh, other devices might have something similar. Uh, so you go over to that option, select on uh, the display adapter here, and then it will connect up. I'm finding that it's not always consistently connecting though. So uh, sometimes it connects right away. Other times it kind of sits here in limbo like it's doing right now. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to connect. Uh, eventually uh, you will get it going, but it hasn't been consistent for me with Android nor with Windows for that matter. So it's still acting a little flaky. Maybe they need to do a firmware update or something uh, to get it all working. But one thing that I've noticed is that once it is connected, uh, the latency on it is very good. So you'll hear that the sound is passing through, uh, again, wirelessly from the phone over to the device. Uh, this particular emulator I'm running recognizes that we have a dual display, so it's basically turned my uh, phone into a game controller, and the latency really isn't too bad. It's still not good enough for Sonic the Hedgehog, but it's a lot better than uh, what we saw on the Chromecast a couple of weeks ago, and certainly much better than some cheaper Miracast devices uh, that are running with a similar protocol here. So it isn't too bad, but it's still uh, not quite there for Android gaming just yet. Uh, but it will be better for things like movie watching or uh, doing some presentations and that kind of thing. So really things that are not dependent on uh, latency here, especially on the Android side, are going to work best. Now what we're going to do is take out my Windows device and we're going to see how the Windows connectivity works and we'll look at a utility that they include for configuring the uh, Microsoft Display Adapter 2. All right, so our experiment today will be connecting this Dell XPS 15 wirelessly to the device that is plugged into our television set here. Uh, Dell did provide this laptop to the channel for us to review a couple of weeks ago. Now the way you connect this up is you uh, slide out the little drawer here from the left. You can also click on the notification button in the bottom of your taskbar. And there's an icon here called connect. You tap on that and then you go over to your display adapter and then that should get these two things talking to each other. So you can see now we are uh, connected. There we go. Things are uh, up and running here. And like on the Android example, I found that the latency is very, very good on this. All right, so I'm going to load up that same emulator now on this Windows device and run Sonic the Hedgehog on here and we'll see what the latency differences are. So I'm going to unpause the game here. And as you can see, as I'm pushing the button here, it's still lagging a little bit behind what we're seeing on the main display. It feels a 
about the same as it did on that Android device. But uh, as you can see here, it, the latency really isn't all that bad for a wireless display adapter. I've certainly tested other Miracast devices that uh, did not fare as well. Uh, so it is really good here, not bad at all, but I'm not going to suggest this to be a gaming uh, mechanism here. I think it's good for uh, displaying PowerPoint presentations and some multimedia and other things, but if you want the best possible gaming experience, uh, you definitely want to use a hard wire to get it in there. There are some uh, HDMI transmitters. We've looked at a couple on the channel, actually, that have very low latency. They do cost a lot of money, but uh, those might be a better alternative over something like this, which will introduce uh, definitely some lag, but not as much lag as we have seen in the past. Now I want to show you how you can configure it. Of course, you can only configure it on Windows, but uh, we'll take a look and see what kind of options we have for uh, making this thing work. So the Display Adapters app lives in the Windows App Store, so you need Windows 8.1 or better to download that app and uh, make any configuration changes. If you don't have a Windows device to do that with, it will work out of the box, but this will add some additional configuration settings that you might find important. So you may want to find a Windows device if you don't have one. Uh, so what you can do when you pop in here is change the name of the device. Uh, you can also adjust the language settings, and this is a really important one. This is the overscan setting, so right now you'll see on my television, I don't see my start menu at the moment, uh, but what I can do is just drag this slider over here and get it to a point where it will change the, essentially the zoom of the image here, so the overscan to the, a point where I can actually get to my start menu. So this uh, little slider here will move left and right and I can adjust it just to where I want it to be. So a lot of TVs will have this problem where you connect up and you can't get to your start menu. Uh, this will give you the ability to adjust that. I know that's an important feature for a lot of folks. Uh, you also have some security settings. So you can uh, lock people out from changing the device settings with a password. So they would have to have a password to uh, get into this app if you want them uh, out of it. Uh, you can also require that in order to pair up with the device, you have to type in a pin code. Uh, and that's useful because if you're, especially in an academic environment where you don't want some kid popping into your room and taking over your session or putting things on the screen that are inappropriate, uh, you can require that there's a pin code that has to be entered correctly first in order for them to connect. Uh, that is very useful. Uh, it's something that is not on the Chromecast at the moment. So on Chromecast, if you're on the network and can see the Chromecast, anybody can cast to it. Uh, on here, you are locked out if you enable that uh, pin option on there, which I definitely recommend doing. You can update the firmware on here as well. It'll look for firmware updates whenever the app is loaded. Uh, you do need to have the adapter paired up with your device in order for this to work. So right now we are connected, uh, and if I'm not connected, you have to connect in order for the app to work. So you can't configure it unless everything is already uh, hooked up and connected. What is pretty cool about this is that it works like any other monitor on Windows would. So I can move windows back and forth between two different displays. I can mirror them like we were doing before. It really acts like another uh, monitor on your system, which is pretty useful. So that is the Microsoft Wireless Display Adapter, the second version, the second coming. It really works quite well. I'm pretty impressed with it, especially how low the latency is between uh, a action that gets performed on your PC and when that action gets uh, translated to the screen. Very little time between those two things. I've seen other adapters where it's a much longer uh, span of time between a button press or a mouse click and something happening on screen. So the latency is very good. Again, still not good for gaming, but uh, very good nonetheless. So they've really made some good improvements here. Uh, the range is about 23 feet away. So this is a same room kind of function, but uh, perfect for conference rooms when somebody's coming in and wants to do a presentation and you don't want to fumble with adapters. If they have a newer Microsoft Windows laptop or an Android device, uh, they can connect to this thing wirelessly. It isn't even on your network. It has its own little wireless protocol uh, that these computers can look for, so you don't have to connect them to your network. They will find this device automatically if they're in proximity, and you can start casting to the screen. So very convenient and very useful, especially if you are a Windows and Android user. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.